Hello everyone. In this session, I will be speaking about the advanced VPN systems available in India. So if you are watching this video, probably you are one of your known person who has been suffering from hydrocephalus and you are contemplating a VP shunt surgery for the treatment of hydrocephalus. So if you want to know which is the best shunt system for you, watch this video until the end. There are numerous, there are n number of shunt systems available. But in India, this video I'm specifically concentrating from India because the number of popular shunt systems available in India are limited. So I'm focusing this video for patients from India. So when you are an Indian and you are contemplating a shunt surgery, uh, this video will guide you to understand what are the shunt systems available. And in coordination with your own treating neurosurgeon, you can make a decision as to which shunt system is best for you. Okay, let me share some video. Hello, everyone. Okay, in this session, I'll be speaking about hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is a very common condition which is encountered within the brain diseases. Broad view, let me speak what is hydrocephalus. What people, non-medical people know about hydrocephalus is hydrocephalus is accumulation of excess water in the brain. This accumulation of excess water causes an increase in intracranial pressure and the resultant symptomatology which is sometimes can cause death if not treated. So let's go into the topic. I will show you some of the animation videos which are available on the YouTube. First, I'll be telling you what is hydrocephalus and then the most important one, what are the treatment approaches available for hydrocephalus? There are mainly two kinds of treatment which I'll be telling you as it goes on. Okay. As a first step, let us try to understand what is hydrocephalus clearly. As I've told you before, hydrocephalus for a non-medical person means accumulation of excessive water in the brain. And this excessive water accumulation has, growth, has caused an increase in intracranial pressure. And this increase in intracranial pressure is life-threatening. So why is there water in the brain? Why is there water increasing? Try to understand. Okay, follow this video clip. Try to concentrate on my arm. Inside our brain, there are empty spaces. These spaces are, are called ventricles. Like you label the home, uh, uh, home number one, home number two, home number three. Similarly, these ventricles in the brain are numbered. These big ones, these semicircular ones are called the lateral ventricles, are ventricle number one and two. This one in between is called the third ventricle, and this one is called the fourth ventricle. So there are four ventricles in our, in our brain. You can see very clearly in this one. These are the lateral ventricles, which are ventricle one and two. They are paired, so are called one and two. The third ventricle and the fourth ventricle. Now see the entire skull. This is our brain. These are the ventricles. And see this blue one. This is the blood supply. This is a venous drainage of the brain. The blood from the brain is recircled back into the heart through these veins. Now coming to the CSF. These ventricles are filled with fluid. Why is this fluid, why is this fluid present within the brain? This fluid within the empty brain, within the cavities of the brain, these are the ventricles. These ventricles are filled with fluid. This green color one which I'm showing over here. Similarly, the fluid also present all around the brain, which you will be seeing in the later part of the animation. This fluid provides protection to the brain. I will give you an analogy. Imagine you have a box with ice cream into the box. Ice cream is similar to your brain. Soft structure, very important structure. Suppose I shake the box. Your brain, that is ice cream, will get injured. So the God has given protection against that injury. So the space between the box and the eyes is filled with a lubricating cushioning fluid. This cushioning fluid is a CSF. This protects the brain against injury from the skull. Suppose there's a hit on the brain. 
the brain moves forward but it may hit this skull but csf provides protection and also csf provides nutrition to the brain so this csf is produced from the choroid plexus which are machines within the ventricles which produce csf so see so this csf is being produced in the lateral ventricles from the first third ventricle they are going to third ventricle then they are going to the fourth ventricle and they are going on over the surface of the brain here it provides lubrication and protection from the surface of the brain they go into the venous system and then into the heart so this process of protection of csf and absorption into the blood is a continuous process is a continuous process so what happens sometimes this continuous process gets broken off it gets damaged there is some problem in this continuous process so when this continuous process which is an equilibrium gets some problem what happens let's see so this is a normal csf flow daily whatever amount is produced is gets absorbed out. this recycling is continuously there within the brain suppose there is obstruction over here so what happens the csf accumulates the size of the ventricles increases the pressure within the ventricle increases and this causes compression of the brain tissue in the last part is it in this animation i have seen what is ventricle why is there fluid within our brain which is called csf what are the functions of csf and why hydrocephalus surplus develops so if there is over protection of csf or obstruction of uh, to the uh, flow of csf or if there is any impairment in the absorption of the csf back into the blood these are the three conditions which causes excess accumulation of this water or csf in the brain and resultant increase in pressure and the resultant compression of the brain parenchyma and the resultant danger to life this pressure can ca cause vomitings it can cause drowsiness patient will slowly slip into unconsciousness finally leading to death i'll be explaining in your detail the various symptoms of hydrocephalus in my next video but in this video i will give you a brief overview regarding the treatment options available broadly there are two two treatment options available one is called a shunt second one is called an endoscopic third ventriculostomy now first i will show you what what is a shunt so of all the options available there are two major options available for the treatment of hydrocephalus one is known as a vp shunt a shunt second one is known as the endoscopic third ventriculostomy the first video is is of a hydrocephalus shunt ventriculo peritoneal shunt let us analyze the word ventriculo peritoneal shunt what is a shunt shunt is bypassing something so this device is, this device pass, bypasses the obstruction within the ventricular system and what is ventriculo ventriculo means the ventricles in the brain as shown in this in this picture these are the ventricles in the brain where the csf is accumulating peritoneal this is the peritoneal this is cavity within our abdomen so in this procedure we place a shunt shunt is basically a tube from the ventricles to the abdomen so when the csf is under pressure when it's accumulating abnormally this fluid bypasses the obstruction and this is passed into the our abdomen let's see the video so one of the catheter tip is placed in the abdomen the proximal tip is placed in the ventricle and this csf the excessive csf which is under pressure goes from the ventricle to the abdomen peritoneum within the abdomen this decreases the pressure and this saves the life of the patient this is the most common procedure which is employed throughout the world apart from 
Apart from the shunting VP shunt or the ventricular peritoneal shunt, we have one more procedure which is also done commonly. This is known as an endoscopic third ventriculostomy. Now let me show you the video of endoscopic third ventriculostomy. 